Hello, my name is Joe, and this is Sierra Specialty Auto. Welcome back to the shop. Recently, I did a video in which I designed and machined a prototype hub to adapt a tangent engineering quill wheel to the Tree 2 UVR and other, some other models of Tree uh, milling machine. During the course of that project, I mentioned to Jim that I also have a Burke Millwright milling machine. I have it set up as a precision drill press. Uh, quill functions, of course, are going to be pretty similar for milling machine use and drill press use. Uh, Jim asked me if I would uh, design and m machine a prototype hub to adapt his quill wheel to that machine. So he sent me another wheel. Uh, he had also already sent me uh, a big chunk of Delrin bar stock. Uh, so I will use a piece of that bar stock to uh, do the same project for the Burke Millwright milling machine. So let's go to the roll around cart and see what we have. Here is the quill wheel as we've seen before. Uh, this particular one that Jim set, sent is the CL1 clone one. It has a through hole uh, approximately one inch and 25 thousandths uh, for the uh, Burke mill. This is the quill handle uh, feature. Uh, there is a nominal one inch hole. It's actually about a thousandth and a half over one inches. There may be some wear in there. It is secured. Don't know if I can get it to show. There's a ball detent in there. Right there. Spring loaded ball that hold uh, snaps into a groove on the quill feed shaft. Uh, we will locate the set screw for the hub we make so that it registers with that groove. It has a single quarter inch dowel pin to engage one of eight holes on the quill feed shaft uh, input. And I'll put a picture of that here. Uh, so we will need to duplicate the hole diameter and the dowel pin. And I think I'm going to put two in. I'm not sure if two would be actually needed. Uh, one might be enough, but it's easy enough when we have this in the rotary table to do other work. Uh, if we're going to drill one hole, we can just spin around and drill two holes. Uh, the holes will be bored for an interference fit, a slight interference fit, with a uh, dowel pins uh, that I'm going to make out of a quarter-inch drill rod. That's what I have on hand. Uh, as I say, the hole measures a thousandth and a half over. The shaft, input shaft, measures about a half a thousand under. So between the two, we'll get some clearance for assembly. So let's get this apart and get this uh, chunk of Delrin into the chuck on the big lathe. We'll do all the important machining operations in one setup. We'll turn this to a nominal three and a quarter. We'll drill, bore, and ream one inch diameter to a depth of about two inches. And then we will bore uh, about 700 thousandths deep. We'll bore out to 1.025 inch to receive the horn button. So let's get started on that. The, the original hub that Jim provides is about an inch and three quarter thick and I think that'll work fine for this application also.
don't know that I'm really happy with that finish. And I think I see why I can use a, a new insert, that's for sure. Ah, oh, that's much nicer. It's a lot more fun parting Delrin than it is parting steel. While I was at the small lathe facing and chamfering the back, I did the uh, little counterboard that I forgot about for the hubcap. I got a nice fit on that. We've got this wrapped in some layers of uh, green tape to prevent uh, jaw marks. Uh, now we'll take this to the milling machine, uh, put it on the rotary table, and put a pattern of six holes on this face for the retaining screws for the collar, and two holes on this face for dowel pins. I have the new hub in the rotary table where centered up and then offset uh, inch and three eighths. I've got my spotting drill in here. I'll set just deep enough to serve as a counter bore uh, chamfer for the five millimeter threaded hole. Let's get to it. I have flipped the hub over, we're centered back up and offset 7 eighths of an inch because the hub on the Burke mill right has a pattern 1 and 3 quarter in diameter. So we take half of that. I believe that two pins will be sufficient, but I'm going to drill a pattern of four holes just in case uh, I decide I'd rather have uh, four pins than two. Uh, we're set up, take just a few seconds extra to do the extra pair of holes. So we'll go around uh, 90 degrees this time. It looks as if we have full threads on the thumb screw. Let's make sure it does go all the way in. right at the limit of the uh, threads, uh, threads on the uh, tap, but we do have a full thread. I want just under 200 thousandths of the dowel pin projecting. I've got three washers that measure a total of about 190, so uh, 194. I will use these on the arbor press to set the depth on the pins. I'll do that off camera, be right back. Here are the pins installed. I did, after a trial fit, I ended up having to go after a combination of washers that measured 170 thousandths deep instead of 190. Uh, two, of, two of the holes have uh, some deformation at the bottom and the pins were not seating 
all the way in those two holes so I took them down a hair more and when I trial fitted the hub to the quill feed shaft I had to take it out after reaming it was almost exactly one inch within a less than a half a thousandth I had to hone it to about a thousandth over about 1.001 in order to get a nice fit over the quill shaft, uh, feed shaft. So let's uh, get the wheel bolted back together, get over to the mill and see how it fits. Here we are at the Burke mill right. Let's see how this goes. That's a nice snug fit. Goes flush up against the quill uh, feed. I can feel the tip of the set screw registering in that groove and pulling the wheel tight. I just that's perfect. And there we go. There's another complete installation. Very simple engineering on this one and Again, we have the good feel and grip of the quill wheel from Tangent Engineering. I recommend this highly. You can go to quillwheel.com. You can call 508-492-2138. Talk to Jim Enos at Tangent Engineering and see if he's got one of these to fit your mill. You'll be happy with it. I want to thank Jim Enos for supplying the quill wheel for this project. I'm happy to have been able to help with the design and engineering of this hub. Uh, this particular one required minimal design and engineering, but Still, it has to be done, and the pro potential problems identified. Uh, again, I'm glad to help with that. I also want to thank Jim for his longtime support of the YouTube creator community. Uh, we all appreciate it, Jim. And I want to thank my viewers for stopping by to watch another project on the channel. I appreciate you watching.